Hello everyone, what's going on? My name is Tim Pedia. Welcome back to the TNT podcast episode. Oh god, I don't even. Oh fuck! Every time. Got the check. Like no, I've been good at it's something. Question mark. Ep- this is no. This we're starting a new Corona series. <laughs> this god, is, this the is a mini series. The, the mini series that takes place where we all don't see each other or speak to each other outside of Discord for the the two episode months number or... is one hundred three. Speak yes. for yourself. Wait, what do you you guys meet outside of Discord? We can't. Yeah. We're under quarantine. What do you mean? Me and Aiden oh, see each gosh. other all the time. To no, my we're right. Not talk about that. That's not That's, real. It's uh, it's Friedman, also known as Andrew, but mostly known as Friedman. And to my left. Wait. That's you. That's you. Oh, that's me. Tyler. Me. Just Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> and as as frequently now <laughs> across from me. Oh, the AIDS. Um. <laughs> the AIDS. <laughs> so this is obviously our first one and geez we haven't done this in like three weeks right uh, yeah last episode was on the 10th so yeah three weeks um obviously a lot has minute. changed since then given current circumstances the world is a very different place um we live I'm... in a post episode 102 world <laughs> we live in a society <laughs> god damn uh, it i'm temporarily <laughs> relocated to new jersey and uh everyone else is basically on lockdown except for tyler and aiden who go to work every day they're, they're essential. Still, they're still working in a hospital. Maintaining they're society. Uh, <laughs> essential personnel. Yeah, don't, don't talk to me, you filthy unessentials. Yo, I've learned that we are about <laughs> as important as uh, GameStop employees. Yeah. So that's good. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's not even on yeah. our. Oh, God. Oh, shit. That's not. Should we, we talk about no. that? Look, I don't know about you guys. I really don't want to talk about only Corona stuff. Well, that's why the weeb shit is filled with mostly non Corona stuff. I know. But, like, okay, so. GameStop, in the time we were gone, tried to stay open, failed, and is now closing hundreds of stores. E3's canceled. Uh, how many, like... Uh, Yo, GD- 2020's canceled, GDC right? got pushed to August. Uh, Olympics got moved to 2021. Olympics got moved. Like, everything fell apart since Every last Every convention in 2020 is canceled. Yeah, t- oh, Tyler actually, pretty much hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Val told me today, Ohio Con is still happening, supposedly. Oh God! Look, no, I mean, that was still happening until like a day ago when they're like, "Ah, we'll cancel it." They'll probably like, cancel it eventually. But it's just hilarious to think of all the people in the Kalahari Resort swimming around with like, "Ah, <laughs> ah, uh, uh, yep, ah, uh, um, no." It's but, fine. Yeah, so... There's chlorine in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, um, you didn't hear it from me. So yeah, everything's canceled. GameStop's not going to reopen. E3 is not going to come back. It's Big changes in the world. Um, do we want to talk about it any more specifically than that? There's just so much that falls into the camp. I mean, of, the it next got one canceled. here is semi-related, but it can be its own little thing. Well, this is this is much more relevant to us than something yeah. useless like E3. I mean, like <laughs> yeah, what even is E3 anymore? I know E3 was the E3 hasn't been like a thing the, for a number of years now. It's I like that day know. where on, more online articles are posted than the usual Tuesday through Thursday. I mean, the best yeah. the best jokes have a hint of truth to them, like E3. <laughs> Look, if Reggie's not gonna be there, then I really don't give a shit. Um, but relevant for me and Friedman. Well, actually, not super relevant. We can't play Magic in person. Um, yeah. The next set. <laughs> did you put MTG Korea on purpose? Oh, oops! I must have misspelled <laughs> it. Um, Ikoria. Ikoria. The next Magic set and the next Commander product is coming out. Jeez, it's uh two next weeks. Friday, right? Next. The tenth. Uh, yes. Or no? Maybe it's. No, no, no. Know. It's 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 the tenth is when it comes out because every Digitally. time I load up Arena, it reminds me how many days are left right. until. So I can't earn Theros shit. The pre-release and digital release were supposed to happen April 10th, uh, but Wizards has canceled the paper pre-releases. They're all going to be at like Arena or Magic Online events now, and somehow you can do it through your game store. I don't know. Um, but the paper release has been delayed of the set, but it's still going to release digitally, so people will still break standard, but Commander players, I guess, also... Oh, this weird era of card legality where technically all these cards are legal in formats but the cards don't actually exist in paper for also a while. Also the paper release wasn't delayed worldwide, just most territories but not Asia. <laughs> oh. oh, is it not delayed in any other English speaking I thought countries? only so otherwise, otherwise thought you're going to have a lot Amer- of like I thought it was like North America, Europe and some other region had it delayed but like or everything but like Asia 
So I can still get my Japanese foils, is what you're telling me. <laughs> um, but uh, not to not to you know offer any options or anything, but uh, Cockatrice is a is a program that happens to run a version of Magic the Gathering. Probably not very legally, but it's free. <laughs> <laughs> and it's how I'm going to be playing Commander with possibly Friedman and mostly with my Ohio buddies who I haven't seen in a while now and still want to play Commander with. Um, but yeah, so it's it's weird that we're going to have this big... And like this is the set where Commander boxes are coming out and no one's going to be able to buy these Commander boxes for weeks. Yeah, this is supposed to be start of the year of Commander and it's off to a fucking awful start. <laughs> yeah, so... I guess at this point, Wizards is like, maybe Commander Legends drafts can happen in person, guys. <laughs> we'll be lucky. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll be talking a lot more about the set next time, either next week or whenever we podcast again. Uh, yeah, I keep seeing a million articles talking about like, oh, spoilers are coming, and it's yeah, just like, spoilers are out, starting, shut the fuck up. Spoilers like, are starting on Thursday, and it's going to be crazy because we have the Commander stuff and the regular set in I think the week. idea is that the Commander stuff spoils over the weekend, and then the real stuff spoils next week. But either way, that means we're going to have like, like seven days of good eight shit. days of insane spoilers because it's, yeah. it's eight crazy nights yes exactly oh man it's like hanukkah <laughs> in april <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah this is this is wild but i mean obviously everything's being affected not just our paper not just game, magic but... Oh well, it means I anyway. can spend money on video games instead of magic cards. Right now. Yeah, let's yeah. let's get out of the depressing news. We speaking have of magic or much video games, more exciting stuff going on here. Is this exciting? I, I just meant, I meant in general, not this next topic in particular. I don't know if this is exciting. It's not exciting to me. Uh, it was definitely out of nowhere. Yes, uh, the this... Modern Warfare Two campaign remaster is is out actually on PS4 until April thirtieth. Yeah. Weird. God, these timed exclusives, especially these short time exclusives, are just so stupid. Like, who's, Why? who's out here is like, I must play the remastered Modern Warfare Two campaign. Well, it's not and even I like have anyone... to choose between buying a PS4 right now or using my Xbox One. What am I gonna do? Like, who's this target audience who's like, yes, I will throw down money for a PS4 well, for thirty days of exclusivity. This is more tied to the fact that um, back around what was it? three or four years ago microsoft gave up the rights for all the early call of duty stuff and sony bought it up so this is just them doing anything early that they can on playstation instead of xbox i mean the, do you remember that exclusivity though when it was on 360 yeah they everyone buku bucks yeah but then microsoft saw that call of duty was going to change and probably not for the more profitable or or to something like warzone where it's a battle pass system that they can't afford to release later on Xbox and PC. So they gave it up. And this is probably the only thing that Sony could say, Hey, give us something for our exclusivity early. But the thing with this, like the exclusivity, at least on 360, it was like, there were multiple months where maps wouldn't come to anything else. Oh, totally. like, I remember when, when it came to like when yeah. zombies was, a, was a mode, like particular maps for zombies were super important because it changed up the game heavily. So like yep. hearing that the, the fucking moon base one was, 360 exclusive for three months was painful. And Whereas, competitive players as well. Oh uh, yeah, I had to play on like, Xbox. So that's yeah. the thing. Like a three a three month gap kind of makes sense because then it's for not just this content. It makes sense. I always want in advance, but like for thirty days does not feel like that long. For thirty a content days player. is not long, but for their modern warfare content, um, I think it's what a year. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, the, it is a year, and yeah. oh, I geez. honestly oh, completely oh, forgot that that was a thing. It's a year thing. for the Spec Ops mode that turned out to be crap. It was turned out to be garbage, so not like that matters. <laughs> Mega disappointment. Because but... we're not going to play it, because it's literally the most impossible shit I've played in a long time. <laughs> so disappointing. We've already talked about that It's enough, more but... difficult than Doom Eternal. It's... it's... <sighs> Doom's not We're even not. That no, hard. that's at the end. We're not getting into Doom right now. Um, yeah, Tyler, you shut up. No, <laughs> it's funny though that we talk about Spec Ops because Modern Warfare Two. I always talk about Spec Ops with my brother. This is only the campaign got the remaster. Nothing else. Who plays Call of Duty for the campaign? Well, isn't the rest of the game already using like the remastered Modern Warfare Two engine? What? Uh, I don't know. I don't think Actually, it's... Look is that. it anything except the campaign? It's just the campaign. Yes. Like none of the maps from multiplayer? No, no nope. none of the multiplayer, no multiplayer or Spec nothing. Ops. Yo, who gives just a shit the about campaign. the Modern Warfare exactly. 2? Exactly, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. saying. 
Who gives I, mean, I I understand why they didn't. If I am playing high rise, though. then I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's like my favorite. I want to play. Uh, oh god. What's the one that has like the same color scheme as Crash, but was like the longer? It wasn't Crash, obviously. I don't remember. There the was some good from uh, the first game. No, from two. We're oh, talking about two. two right now. I can't remember. Two had some good multiplayer uh, maps, but it's like, again, like Tyler said, who. The campaign is like whatever. Like, oh wait, but no wait, we could play no Russian though. I thought that's in the first game. <laughs> no, no, that's in two. No, that's in two. It is. Yes. That's li I'd literally whatever. just get to no Russian and be like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> and that was it. Who gives a shit about this game? Can Do you guys even know the story to Modern Warfare? Do you guys remember no, it? This no, because I remember the no, nuke. No, because I never the played the campaigns in any of the Call of Duty games. <laughs> no, because in the I, first I, game you had I the nuke and the AC-130, and that was it. That was it. I play. I played all the campaigns. I still can't, well, on top of me having just a shitty memory, I honestly can't, like, tell you remotely what, nope. it, what the deal is, because it's just... I can tell you some of the missions that were cool, like uh, no Russian, <laughs> like the, the, no Russian is just was just for shock value. Uh, no, I thought legitimately in the first Modern Warfare, uh, where you play as Captain Price, the sniper mission. Yep. In a uh, that's what so that's what I always think of when you say no Russian. I think of the sniper crawling mission. I forgot about the airport for a second. Yeah, the, there's the yeah, the airport. No, because there was the sneaking. Remember. There was the AC-130, and there was the nuke, and those were all crazy. And then yeah. it's like, beyond that, it's like whatever. I just it think, I just think like, especially with Spec Ops being so disappointing in the new Modern Warfare, like, you could have just put that out remastered, and then I would have been jealous. Then I would have bought it on PC probably to play a good Spec Ops mode with you guys in co-op. <laughs> yeah. Because me and Tyler especially are jonesing for some co-op since we already did Halo. Uh, why couldn't yeah? Why couldn't they remaster Modern Warfare Two Spec Op missions? That's what I'm saying. No, that was some good stuff. <laughs> like, come great. on. Um, this was yeah. disappointing. I don't think we need to talk about this much more. It's like, okay, it's nah. It's, it kind of yeah. sucks that they did it like this, um, but I mean, really I I understand why they didn't do multiplayer. I mean, it's cool that you remastered this campaign, but I mean, like. You're giving is... us better things already. Like yeah. modern, I actually really enjoyed the Modern Warfare campaign. I didn't play it like, past two the, levels. The new one, so it's like yeah. I thought it was cool, and I thought it was better than all the other ones so far. So right. like, I I just don't I don't know. Maybe they had extra resources. They had a bunch of artists sitting around doing nothing. I mean, now that everyone's working from home, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, all pretty right. much. Yeah, they flipped this in like two weeks. <laughs> Um, surprise here it is but yeah so uh speaking of the rona oh yeah because we, so we said we weren't going to talk about I it i know but we no but this is this can be second. viewed as a good thing well this is a good thing depending on the so, release pattern we talked about how conventions are closing uh the other thing that's changing is movies obviously theaters are a big problem so things are coming into streaming super fast um, as we talked about a while ago, James Bond unfortunately got kicked to frickin' Thanksgiving. Um, but now... It's gonna get delayed again. Films that were either just recently out or are about to come out or, you know, were just in theaters are either getting pushed faster to digital or just while they were in theaters. So things like Onward, which I have now watched... Um, yeah, I'm, are, I'm gonna watch are it now it on out. streaming uh, for what is kind of a ridiculous price... Yeah, that's coming to Disney Plus, but a lot of these services are also a lot of oh, these pop-up yeah. services They're are charging like, like twenty dollars. Twenty dollars for a forty-eight hour rent, which when you think about it, if more than two people watch is actually a deal compared to a theater, but a theater also has like the seats and everything and the big screen. I mean, so, they're pricing around families, which the average yeah. family of four means like five dollars. Yeah, is, so it is, is still a, steal. a deal. But for someone who's following the actual word of the law and self-quarantining, it's very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, exactly. again, coming to Disney Plus soon. So, I will say uh, uh, it's coming out this weekend, which is the third April third. It's coming out. I forgot to put it into the watch stuff, but I'll just talk about it for a sec. The movie's pretty good. It wasn't like. Yeah, yeah. I I want to see it just because of the concept. Yeah. Um, I like the mixing of uh, 
fantasy and modern. I will say, uh, one Tyler's of the, uh, aesthetic. Yeah. I, I will say actually, like the final boss thing in the movie is one of the coolest, like almost D and D monsters I've ever seen. <laughs> Neat. So Definitely I, I would it. check that out. It was really cool. Um, but yeah, it's a fun movie, and definitely if you have Disney Plus, it's the first thing since Mandalorian that might be worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, shots fired. Oh, for no, it's, real. I uh, uh, honestly, I forgot Disney Plus existed until you just brought it like up. I, like two I, minutes I wasn't ago. really kidding. I haven't opened the app on my phone since Mandalorian finished. So. I also have yeah. not opened the app since Mandalorian. I mean, if given I, that I don't rewatch Disney movies, I too have not opened the app since I finished Mandalorian. Well, I also, if I wasn't. If I didn't have it for free for a year, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be paying for this. Um. But anyway, uh, yeah. So lots of movies are coming out early, and I know there was talk of like, oh, maybe like Wonder Woman coming to digital and all this other stuff. That's like, just things that are coming soon that are either gonna get have to get delayed a ton or, uh, be it or just, you know, come out super late or stream early. So. Talking about things that are coming out well this is coming out on time resident evil 3 the remaster is coming out this weekend same day as uh, onward yeah i that should have crept up on me real quick (laughs) Uh, i was like what is this coming out anyway everybody's talking about now oh it's coming out this week (laughs) (laughs) if we're talking about uh just to mention since if we're bringing talking about games coming out also uh final fantasy 7 is coming out next weekend Oh, oh my yeah. god, we're getting conflicting reports here that they they haven't shipped any of the games anywhere and there's going to be delays, but then we're also hearing that most places have already broken street date, which means they oh, yeah. already ship games places, so I'm getting yes. conflicting reports well, everywhere. My plan of buying it next day on Amazon has been aggressively foiled, so I will not be playing this game on launch day because well, I do not have a big enough hard drive for this. I'll tell you what, I feel obligated. I know I, this is originally about Resident Evil 3, but like we teetered over into Final Fantasy 7 real quick. Now that we're talking about it, I feel even more obligated to buy it because I did the whole Butterfinger thing to get waifu. Oh, shit. I still need to send in... I hope I didn't miss the deadline to send in my receipt. No, you didn't. You didn't miss the deadline. I think it's like April 30th or something. Oh, cool. I gotta send it in, then. Um, Alright, so make sure... All right, this is this goes for everybody else. I took a clean photo. If it doesn't work, I mean, you gotta take a clean photo, but it's gotta be like out and go get a flat surface, okay? Because I think I didn't do that. I like took a picture of like it in my hand, but like it was still a clean picture, but they denied it. And then I took it on a flat surface, and then it was fine. And I was like, okay, but um, oh, so I guess. Did we talk about this promotion? Where you? Uh, we haven't spoken about it on the podcast yet. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the uh, Square is having this promotion with Butterfinger, where if you go and you buy two any Butterfinger or like any of the products that are in that line, like Baby Ruth or something like that, um, and you take a picture of your receipt, then you get a Tifa Dynamic theme for your PlayStation Four. A who? And uh, I think it's pretty great. Only because he meant Tifa. Oh, okay. Tifa. Oh wait, what Her did name I say? is Tifa. Thank <laughs> you. Tifa. <laughs> Tifa. 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 Whatever the fuck. Um. When you uh, what's it called? It plays the Niflheim theme Ooh. every time you boot up your PlayStation. Wow. It's pretty great, and like I've was... caught myself just sitting here listening to it. So you're saying it was worth two butterfingers? Well, I'll be right back. Keep it going. was Keep definitely mind, worth. You two also butter get fingers. two butterfingers when you pay for this theme. But you also don't just get butter, or you don't just get uh, the Tifa theme though. You also get um a bunch of shit. Uh, hold on, shit. Now I gotta look it up. So I didn't just get those stuff. I got accessories, like in-game accessories. I can give people. Oh, yeah, they have a bunch of these for different, like, pre-order stuff going on. Yeah, uh, let's see. Final Fantasy DLC. All right, so it's Baby Ruth Butterfinger or Crunch Bars. Uh, I don't know if I like that. So I got why? Yo, I love Butterfinger. I usually don't eat Butterfingers, but I enjoyed both the ones I purchased. The the accessories, though, like, that is kind of stupid. You get a Shinra bangle. I got a Shinra bangle, Corneo's armlet. Super, uh, su- dude. If the superstar belt is like the actual superstar belt in every game, it's busted. 
Yeah, like and what I'm the fuck? Go crystal. What do you mean what? what? The fuck, man? Making you overpowered and shit. Make me overpowered by by Butterfinger. Hey, <laughs> powered sponsored. by Butterfinger. No, nope, <laughs> that's not how sponsors work. <laughs> it's not how sponsors work. How? Yo, just send me Butterfinger, all right? No, you don't even no. gotta send me a whole box, all right? Just one, <laughs> just one Butterfinger. <laughs> just send me one, man. Fun size, one fun size Butterfinger. Just send me one fun size, and that, that's all I want. Uh, I'd be pretty proud of that if I could get a company's uh, marketing department to send me some shit like that, though. <laughs> right, like, <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Let's go. Um, yeah, but, uh, so we completely back... dodged that Resident Evil 3 topic. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm i not, like, super duper excited about it. I spoke about it before, and I guess I just wanted to touch on it again because it's coming out. Um... <clears throat> haven't oh. heard great things so <laughs> i just hear it's whatever i uh the demo's out now if you want to try it um i haven't played the demo <clears throat> which, which demo sorry for resident evil 3 oh you heard yeah not, the, right? uh, along wow. with the uh the multiplayer um i haven't heard much about the multiplayer myself from anyone who's played it like any of my other friends who's, pl uh, who's played it they're just like eh, mm. not really for it so that that'll probably probably flop like every other Resident Evil multiplayer that has tried to spring into existence. No way. <laughs> Resident Evil Outbreak. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. The, uh... Resident Evil Raccoon, Raccoon Operations. Operation Raccoon so, City. I'm it, so surprised. From what I've seen from Resident Evil 3 so far cuz like there's some reviews out about it now. Apparently it's pretty short. <laughs> And like short feels game. like not a long like it doesn't feel like a like a game though. I mean, wasn't it like which is like... why ever which is why I think they snuck in that multiplayer thing because oh. they announced that separately from Resident Evil Three, if you recall. We they didn't did. even have Resident Evil Three confirmed at the time that they showed that multiplayer off. Yeah. So it seems like they kind of were like, ah, uh, we have two half finished products. Fuck it. And then slapped them together. But that that's the thing though. Resident Evil 3 was a short game. I, I beat it in a day. I mean, all right, most Resident Fair. Evil games you could beat in a day, technically. But like I I remember zooming through this game in, in like a day and it didn't even like cross my mind. How yeah, but it, at least in like at least Resident Evil 2 you have like the routes that you can take you can play as Leon and Claire and you have right. route A and B and whatever and like it doesn't completely change the game up but i mean it makes it changes enough things that it keeps it interesting and you don't really get that with Resident Evil 3 so like you you have like that 5 hour experience and then that's it yeah and I don't know. I got maybe it. Maybe should have been a DLC. Full price, so yeah, fair. That's fine. I got it off Green Man Gaming for like forty-seven bucks. So I was like, fine. Uh, I, actually, I'm... I was thinking of waiting. I was thinking of waiting for a Resident Evil Three, but I was like, eh. <clears throat> but now I have to bang it out before, because I decided to say fuck it and get Final Fan commit to Final Fantasy Seven after playing that demo. Yeah, that demo was pretty great. I'm excited for it. I need to take a hard break from Monster Hunter before playing Final Fantasy VII. My muscle memory is killing me whenever I <laughs> try switching between them. Oh, God. Um, Wait, real quick, because you brought up demos before we go to the next topic. Um, Square Enix surprised everyone during the mini Nintendo Direct. I didn't put the Nintendo Direct on here because like almost nothing came out of it. But um, they but put out a demo the for Bravely characters from ARMS. Whatever, no one gives a shit. I'll talk more <laughs> when they actually pick a character from ARMS to use. But um, a demo for Bravely Default 2, the third entry in the Bravely Default series, <laughs> uh, just released for I love Switch. It. And apparently the demo is pretty hard, so I want to try it out. Um, I think the Brave Bravely Default as a series is just like Octopath, but not bad, is the best Damn. way to put it. Like, yeah. all the shit that's wrong with Octopath, Bravely Default does better. So I hear. Shot. I mean, it has a real story. <laughs> it already has a million points over Octopath Traveler. All right, sorry. Moving on to the next topic. Uh, Tyler, this is yours, I think. Yeah, is, you're, you're oh, right yeah, this one. yeah. Um, so it's been decided by Marvel and DC. Uh, I guess previous, like yesterday, uh, the publisher who like kind of, or the, sorry, the distributor 
for comic books, uh, Diamond, they said they weren't going to like hand out any more comic books. They weren't going to like distribute anymore. And then uh, today, uh, Marvel and DC came out and said there's going to be no more new comics going forward until things get settled so what you're telling me is in about a week we're going to see a lot of new e-comics or like little comic series online that are similar but different probably question mark actually you know what i've seen a lot um a few uh writers do um like i know uh oh my god uh what the fuck is the the guy oh what the fuck is his name is a really popular artist, but he has this uh, series called Sunstone, um, <clears throat> and he gave out the first volume for free as a PDF to like encourage people to like stay home and like do whatever. Um, That's pretty nice. And buy the later pretty... issues on Kindle. <laughs> yeah, like well, it's also been out for a while too. Mm-hmm. It's been on like a humble bundle, so he's probably like at this point, like yeah, who gives a shit? Like anyone can like you know like read it now um but that's like pretty cool but i'm like damn this is kind of nuts because uh my comic book store just changed owners and he's and he's had to stop uh business since last week since uh like you know anything hasn't you know everything hasn't been declared as an essential business and he just bought the store from the previous owner woof so now he can't sell any comic books or anything like that uh, until this is over. And he's like l- hemorrhaging money from this. That's pretty damn. So now I don't know what's going to happen to this store. Like if that store goes under, I don't know if I'm ever going to like go well, to another place. So here's a question. What are his costs right now? Uh, I don't know. It's however, however much it is to, you know, stock the place with comics and, However much rent is, I guess, because I was gonna say most of the expenses should also be gone. Like you shouldn't be paying employees to go to the store. Oh no! But... Well, that's a, yeah. No, he doesn't have. He has one other employee, but like he, like pays him in credit sometimes. Wow. It's like a it's a weird thing. Apparently, the dude's like okay with it. Like he's been like just doing it, and he only do- like works only like once or twice a week. So, um. It's not even that much. So really, he's only been running the store by himself since January. Damn. So like, yeah. So in terms of cost for like, you know, keeping up running the store, it's on him anyway. Right. So the yeah, but like it just it super sucks because it sucks for me too because like now like my ritual of going in once a month, uh, you know, and then buying my fucking stack out of my box. And then coming home and reading it is now over. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I knew it was gonna be over, but like, it's it sucks to hear stuff like that. Like everybody, like a lot of people, just out of jobs. Yeah, it'll get better. It'll just gotta good. make it through. Stay positive, Tyler. Gotta stay See positive. See all the notes on the on the glass when we leave work. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> motivation, Tyler. You need motivation. Yeah got so um, much of it overflowing it certainly sucks now that i'm actually like interested in comics and want to buy them that <laughs> they immediately no exist. <laughs> they're just like no this no longer exists no, it's fine you have a backlog bro i got mad comics yes yeah, yo i can just read tyler's stash that's yeah, fine like i said backlog. my stash of comics will keep you for months yeah i do want to read batman can you lend me batman yeah, I got yo know, this run of this whole run of Batman. I got it physical. Oh god! I gotta Tyler. dig through my shit though. I gotta, I gotta get it. No, that's fine. We'll discuss this later. We have more <laughs> important things to to talk about. Like the apparently almost confirmed rumor that Nintendo is going to release a crap ton of Mario games for the 35th anniversary. Oh god! Including a collection of 60 Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy. So I can best describe my reaction as like, you know, have you guys ever seen the Vince McMahon, uh, just oh, getting way too excited? Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so like when I heard like all all Mario games gonna be re released, I'm like, ah, oh, it's gonna be just like that time they did it on Super Nintendo, whatever. And then I saw Mario Sunshine remake, I'm like what? Or sorry, no, no, I saw Mario 64 remaster, I'm like 
this this can't be. And then I saw Sunshine, and I'm and I get to the panel where he's fucking losing it because all I've wanted since they <laughs> accidentally showed off that HD remake of Sunshine they didn't do on Wii. All I've wanted is to play this game in HD. <laughs> I don't give a shit about any other games released. The fact that it, it might all be in one cartridge is insane. Well, but all so, I give a shit about is Sunshine. Maybe a little bit of Galaxy, but definitely Sunshine. Apparently, it's there's those three are going to be in a package as a special anniversary collection. Uh, but then there's also talk of Super 3D World uh, coming this year, and more, and a new Paper Mario. Oh. So... Yeah, apparently there's a whole possibility of a whole spread of Mario games coming out this year, but that three collection seems pretty heavily rumored. That sounds like it would be like a really cool collector's item to have. Definitely. I mean, they're, they're really pushing the 35th anniversary. Or for someone like me who never really had a Nintendo system they used until this past week in quarantine no, <laughs> yeah, Super I can play Mario some 64 Mario games. is a banger but the one that one so I did one play on, actually I should have said I didn't beat the it the one but... on DS uh, was better in my opinion you got more stars yeah the first one I played was on DS but I was during my, my last adventure outside before quarantine um, at my friend's apartment his roommate was playing through 64 and I forgot how creative level design was back then I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Maybe it's that version. Maybe they're just using that version as the base because it's a newer version. That would Possibly. be pretty cool. I don't know. I we'll find out when Nintendo down. actually announced it instead yes, of just of one course. leaker. <laughs> but also, we're clearly in the era of mini directs, so who knows when the next mini direct will happen? Yeah, that, the, any the other mini direct didn't even have a 24 hour in advance notice. It just happened. <laughs> so like, no sad. one was paying attention. God, like, what are you doing? Everyone's at this? home with nothing to do. Wait, what is this? Right, this? I want I want to tell the saga of this one real quick because <laughs> I got like four people I know all spam me, dude. There's gonna be a Demon Slayer game on PS4. What the hell? And I look up the news and I'm like, there's it's probably gonna be just like the uh, My Hero Academia games, which are in turn bad knockoffs of the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games. Damn. And lo and behold, it's the same studio working on all of these fucking oh games. God. Yeah. So course. it's going to be the same over the shoulder God, arena so fighter. Boring. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be shit. So don't bother. If you hear news about it, just literally don't pay attention to it. This is not gonna be a good game. It's not. So I thought I'd kill the hype right there. That was the end of that topic. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was fast. <laughs> so you killed it all, right? There, there is no God Summer. Rip that heard, bandaid heard, off now. <laughs> I heard the rage in your voice. I'm like, good. Be angry because this game's not worth it. I think that was game our first sub minute topic that we've had. <laughs> it probably doesn't even need to be noted in the show. Um, but what is worth noting is Tyler and I got to see a trailer for a book for the first time, possibly ever. Uh, yeah, dude. After such a long Peace drought, talks. Dresden Files is returning with a trailer for Peace Talks that came out, which also announced the second book is coming out just three months after. Battleground! Which is, which is uh, this seems like a big one-two punch thing again, and I'm really excited. I had this, I, I had this book pre-ordered in January, so. I got real hype for it, because I think, so the, so I'll tell you what, the trailer... The trailer is so Super clearly corny. made. No, it's made on like two dollars out of a bunch of fans doing stuff, and it's fine. It's it's fine, and like I think I was like, oh whatever. Like, I'm like, is this supposed to be like fucking Thomas? Is this supposed to be Ebenezer? No, it's cool, especially to... at the end. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, why is he gonna be like, hey Ebenezer, time to fight? I guess. Um, it's but it was cool. It was it, it was, was neat cool, to see but these the, characters. The biggest but... news was at the end when he was like. Yo, Battleground three months later. This I'm like, oh my god! Yeah. So the original books released like one or two a year, and then it's slowly tapered off. And then in the last like five years since, or even like eight years since I became a big fan of the series, we've had like three books in the last eight years while I've yeah, been a fan. He, you know, I watched an interview with him recently. He apparently his original concept of these books were like. 20 to 22 books well we're getting there but also i remember reading multiple times like he's gone through a lot of shit in the last few years like his dog died he got divorced he moved he got remarried he got, a, he like, got remarried it's like whoa <laughs> yeah it's, inside, it's a lot, all so. inside like four years yeah it's wild but so it's understandable but i'm just so excited for not one but two books to be out this year yeah and actually i was gonna save this for 
later, but I was told because I told you, Tim, I was like, man, I really want to reread these books, but I don't you know gotta. if I'm ever going to have the time. Uh, so a friend of mine in college, she posted the trailer for the well, like I had already seen the trailer, but like she posted it. Uh, she posted it, and we were talking about it. And she's like, oh, like I think the audio books are great. It's read by James Marsters. Now, for anyone who's uninitiated, uh, James Marsters is the guy who plays Spike in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So obviously, I fangirled out, <laughs> and um, I already got, I started since I had to be doing a lot of uh, building computers at another site. Uh, I started it and I finished Stormfront already. It's so nice. So, so is, this, is this the third media you're you've read Stormfront through? <laughs> yes, <laughs> digitally, paper, and audiobooks. That's funny. Yeah. Um. So, just wait till you get to some of the good books. <laughs> yeah, I, dude. I know. I can't wait to, like to because I need to refresh my memory. It's been like ten years since I've read these books. So that's you did so read like the a lot of my... one though, right? When we we talked about Skin Game. Yeah. No. We, yeah. yeah I remember, yeah. Skin Game. I read Skin Game. I try get that's sure. the one I tried getting signed. No, I know, I know. I'm just making sure because you said ten years, and thankfully books. Oh have come yeah, out in the last no, 10 years. Cold Days. Well, I guess Cold. Yeah, no, Cold Days came out like. Oh my god, that book is so a hot boring. minute ago. Ugh. Like, like the jump between Ghost Story and Cold Days and Skin Game, like it's not like it's. So it was a long. long ass time. Luckily, they're fantastic, but it's so long. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if if you if anyone if any listeners are into uh, the fusion of noir and magic, or if that kind of tickles your fancy, it's just I... a D and D story thing. It's one of those like <laughs> it's this not is... it's not a D just a D. Okay, but it's such a self insert. It's crazy. <laughs> it is a self insert. Like. He wears a trench coat. He has a cowboy hat. He has a staff. He has a. Pistol. He does not have a cowboy. You're hat. You're right, but all the Tim. every single book cover says he does. So he says he does, and then he, but and he then in the book he comments. Ever. He's like, maybe I should get one. He, no, he he doesn't. So the art always shows it, and then in the comics he doesn't have it. But then, uh, in the books he's like, but what? I'm the cowboy of Chicago. <laughs> He does, but then he but he comments on not having the hat though. No, I know, but I'm saying he see he's like maybe I should get it because he feels like he is. Yeah, or was it? He also talked about the utility of it as well a few yeah. times. But it's it's very self aware. What was it? It's because of like a disagreement or something like that. Not a disagreement, but like the the guy who does these fucking covers like doesn't talk to him or whatever. Damn. <laughs> yeah, so, something like that. Like, there's no communication between Jim Butcher and the artist who does these like weird things. So now it's just a meme now, where like <laughs> he's ju- he just has the hat. That's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, no, we don't have to keep talking about this. No, I'm excited. Though. It's super exciting to get two books from this series that we've gotten like three books in the last eight years. So yeah, I'm really hyped. Um. Well, now Speaking we can move on from hype, last week. You know what shit. else gets me hype? It's time for the weeb shit. And we're going to start with the most hype shit on the planet. So a couple weeks back, there was supposed to be this big convention. It was like Anime Fest 2020 in Japan. Straight up canceled. We all know why. Um, and the two big announcements we were waiting on was literally anything about the next season of Attack on Titan. <laughs> and then something about celebrating like the whatever the anniversary of Bleach. We still know Jack shit about Attack on Titan. But we did hear that they're going to be animating the entire last arc of Bleach. I don't know what timeline I stumbled into, but this one is fucking weird. <sighs> Never did I expect Bleach to come back for another season. This thing was done. Like, like Bleach hit its peak, and then it's like, all right, let's just keep I was going. expecting it to be dead. And everyone hated it. And then the anime quit, because like, people hate this. And then he went on for one more arc, and everyone fucking hated it. So they canceled Bleach. <laughs> That said, they're animating that awful arc that got Bleach canceled, and I couldn't be more excited to watch this shit again. Jesus it's almost God. like I didn't learn my lesson watching Food Wars. Oh, God. Um, oh, please, no. Not another one. Don't but throw in, it to me again. But in the meantime, since Bleach has ended, uh, the author has gone on to do several like short one-shot stories, and one tested so well internally, they talked to studios about making an OVA series about his upcoming like one-shot series. 
So the wow. show Burn the Witch that has the same like character designs you'd expect in Bleach, but with just a different setting, is going to have one. I'm very excited for it. So there's one thing that Tite Kubo is good at: it's character designs, and that's it. That's all he's good at: is character designs. That's all he's, that's all he's got. So I'm very excited to see what what he does with an opportunity to design new characters. Uh, but moving on, there's just I think the entire top half of this is all just new season announcements, and more than half of these are in the last 48 hours for some reason. Uh, so Seven Deadly Sins. I don't know if you guys caught on to the controversy that happened with it last season. Um, but the first couple seasons of Seven Deadly Sins were okay. The last season, almost 90% of it got outsourced to another studio. And then that studio proceeded to outsource 90% of the work again. <laughs> so we're two layers down with no oversight. And they started animating this fight, which looked disgusting. And then there's this one scene where the main character, Meliodas, is on the ground. He's kind of like leaning backwards while sitting. And this other character comes up to him. And I'm going to try and find the picture because I can't describe how badly this one shot looks. Search seven deadly sins, the first thing that comes up is bad animation. <laughs> All right. Hold, this, like, sometimes I'll post, like, pictures of, like, Naruto where the in-between shots look stupid. I posted this one. Oh this, is, this was <laughs> not so a still sh This was a, an extended sequence of the two of them talking, and this is how he was drawn. <laughs> what the hell yes. is so, this? So there was a lot of criticism thrown around around the season. Everyone's like, that's it. The show's just going to be fucking canceled. The manga ended last month. There's no way they're going to animate the last arc. And they're like, fuck yeah, we're going to do another season. One more arc. We got to show you everything. <laughs> so we're getting one more arc, and hopefully they learn that you can't double outsource. Uh, I don't know if it's going to change, given the current situation and how animation to China works the, at the moment. The outsource inception. But we'll see. Um, Netflix is kicking themselves because they own the exclusive rights to this shit. Oops. So, and I think, I think it they still brings in numbers, ball. but... But they're like dreading the fact that they have to adapt this season that was notably garbage. <laughs> so we don't know what's going to happen there. Oh. Uh, moving on to a surprise that literally no one in the world could possibly have imagined. My Hero Academia Whoa. will be getting a season five. No oh date my given. God. I can't I know. Like, it. what the Who could have You mean predicted? to tell me the third largest, third, uh, second or third largest? Or no, I think they're ranked fifth this year. Point is. One of the big five is getting another season. That's ridiculous. Also, Shock outside of like Japan, possibly. I mean, could you argue that this is the biggest right now? Um, so I'm gonna exclude Demon Slayer because it's in kind of a weird place where all of its numbers are really high just because everyone bought all the shit this year. But right. now that everyone's kind of like caught up on the manga, sales are tapering off it sounds like you watched as that as super eye patch wolf video from a few weeks ago <laughs> maybe i also watched some other ones <laughs> no i know um, but yeah no one piece is still king don't listen to the rumors uh but the no thing i knew Hiramimia that but is... i i didn't mean in manga sales though i meant in terms of like just oh, popularity. um i mean here academia has like a three-year advantage on it but it's definitely like the fact that funimation rebranded their entire like company around my hero even <laughs> even while they had the rights to dragon ball super says something right so the fact that it's also like on toonami it's this one gets the prime time slot basically this, it's, this the, show no that it's the premium simul dub so yeah no this is definitely huge we i was gonna say it boiled down to if we got like a the demon slayer movie released in the u.s like shortly after it does in japan i'd argue that they're close but now We'll never know because both of those are technically delayed. <sighs> like Japan is Japan does not jive with streaming. So do not expect any movies that were coming out this year to get like streaming releases. Of course. They're gonna just hold on to it indefinitely because they don't understand how the internet works. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. So I will say, uh, as someone who has been splitting time between like Steam games and Switch games the last few days, holy moly. It's one thing to like talk about and hear about like how the Switch does online stuff, and then actually experiencing it. Like, oh, I still, I still haven't paid oh for it, and then everyone's like, "Oh, we'll visit Animal Crossing towns." Like, yeah, but I don't want to pay twenty dollars for this. Oh my god, garbage online Animal system. Crossing, I cannot yeah. stand how the online for Animal Crossing works. The fact that it, it relies on a separate mobile app. Like, Yuri. here's the thing: everyone keeps talking about how the Switch is a is a a home console, and I keep wanting to remind everyone, no. The PSP you could plug into your TV. That doesn't make the PSP a home console. <laughs> the Switch is just a really good mobile device. Yes. Hence, it's reliance on all these roundabout bullshit ways of connecting online, even though cell phones do it better. Oh, Friedman. What? 
uh, apparently the guy who creates uh, Konosuba. Kona, you, you're on our anime anyway. What am I? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, 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 Tim, I'm the one who posted that article on r slash anime today. Made him check the username. It wasn't me. No, I didn't um, check it, but I knew. But there's I some weird speculation. Possible. So the art, the the post on Reddit says there's gonna be an announcement about Konosuba tomorrow, but it's actually the author of Konosuba who has other work says he is making a big announcement tomorrow, and he didn't give a topic on it. So we don't know so if it's everyone something just regarding it's Konosuba. Everyone assumes it's Konosuba. We have no idea. It could be. I think he has like two other series that are in serialization that could be getting adaptations or new news. Uh, but again, we'll find out tomorrow. I was originally wasn't gonna put it on here because I figured if it's important news, I'll just report on it next week. Yeah, but so much news, might as well cover it. I know. Uh, moving on, because you brought up Konosuba, uh, Isekai Quartet got a season three announced at the end of its final episode. Everyone's super excited because unlike season one that had four shows, this one had six, technically, and we can only assume it's going to go up next season. So once once we're com- finished assembling the anime Avengers... I mean, it, all- it seems like it's really popular and it seems really cheap and easy to make. It... Like except for the voice talent, it's using basically like um <laughs> chibi art, <laughs> like animated web comic software. Like it's not that hard to to do this show. And even though even I'm watching it now, and I'm I'm realizing I'm at the point where I almost want to recommend most people you don't have to watch the entirety of the source material it comes from. You just need to watch enough to understand who these characters are so you get what they're joking at. But like this show is not deep at all, and most of the jokes I've seen in other shows before, so it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of just okay. But if they want to keep pumping this out, and I can get dumb jokes of just um. Fuck, why am I trying to blank on his name? Uh, Cosmo from Konosuba just Look, trolling literally every character in every other series. I will gladly watch all the episodes Look, of that. Look, I think that if nothing else, this show brings attention to all the shows that are in it and makes it more likely that all any show on this will get like another season. Like I know you were saying that RE0 is going to get one more and then probably never again. Maybe. I mean, if it, if ReZero does, it's going to be like five years from now because well, it'll sure, take fucking I'm forever saying, to come out. Look, I just want Overlord to get another season. <laughs> And I'm hoping that the popularity from this helps. <laughs> See, you gotta you gotta remind Val when she talks about how she wants Chihaya Fudu season four, you have to keep in mind the same studio I know. that did all of Overlord also does Chihaya Fudu. Fuck. <laughs> but they clearly spend way more money on Chihaya Fudu. I mean this season was animated way shittier than 20, the last one was, but that was twenty thirteen and anime's changed a lot. Did you watch the uh Oh the I, like special episode about the did. making of? Yeah. Not yet. I'm planning okay. on it. It was interesting because they act like they still have most of the same people from the original seasons like years ago. Probably. I'm wondering if that's what they're waiting to see if they can get like the, like not the the animators, but like the creative staff together for it. Right. I don't know. Which would explain why No Game No Life Season 2 isn't going to happen. All right. That makes a lot of sense. Fuck Madhouse. (laughs) God, I wish it was 2013 still. Back when they were peak. Anyway, um, on to some news that riles up the weeds. Speaking about getting hurt. The weeds. The weeds. (laughs) Getting hurt. Funimation Wait, is trying. My... Funimation's trying their best, but they just keep pissing people off. Wait, you missed the. I you missed my the thing I transitioned into. Oh shit! I completely skipped over wow, the show with the go. super dumb title. Broke I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. <laughs> um, so I personally love this show. Uh, they just confirmed a season two at the end of the final episode. Uh, but. It was the other day I was on Reddit and someone's like, oh, d- besides dealing with the controversy for Bofuri, which is the short name for the show. And I'm like, what controversy? So I look it up and everyone's like, the show is garbage. Nothing happens. There's no progression. The characters are all very bland. The main character's OP. And I sat there I'm like, you know, these they're all right. But like, the show is executed in a way that made it entertaining. Like, I, I'm not going to walk away saying this is a, a grand story of this girl who just like breaks every bug in this game. It's more just like, Look at this girl who just fucking glitches her way through not having any stats but vitality and the devs are just like, oh, fuck, what obstacle can we throw in front of her this week that she can easily knock over because she broke our game? Like, it's <laughs> it's funny to watch this stupid scenario wrapped around a cute girl's doing cute things anime that's also wrapped inside of a trendy VR MMO show that has enough lingo to keep gamers involved. Like, it touches all of these cool ideas, but it's not great at any of them. But it's still a very <laughs> enjoyable show. It's the most ringing but, endorsement ever. <laughs> but like Weebs are like this is the, the, Weebs are like this isn't special. And I'm like you're right, it's not special. It's good though, and it's tearing the community apart about whether you should recommend this as a good it's show or not. Tearing me apart, Lisa. For real, we really don't know if it's trash or not. Like I this, for my opinion, 
this can't even be remotely compared to trash but i understand when people say this is not like an amazing show to tell tell people it is and whatever it's good it's fun it's wholesome it's funny watching the devs panic when they realize the same player keeps breaking their game every patch anyway that show is owned by Funimation, so I'll get into Funimation's news. Um, Funimation likes doing this. They they don't license a show because it might flop. Crunchyroll gets it. Everyone like loves the shit of season one, and then Funimation's like, all right, cool. We now exclusively own season two. <laughs> oh my god. So they did this with Kaguya-sama Love is War, which is arguably the... I'm ch- checking if there's anything else airing next season that's going to blow everyone's mind that I should be aware of. Uh, Kaguya-sama is one of the big shows next season that everyone is excited for. And outside of America, Funimation like just doesn't operate. So everyone outside of the U.S. is fucked because now they can't watch this show legally. Oh, um, my God. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, it, it meant they were going to get a simul dub. So like the, the dub weebs were very happy. Uh, as someone who pays for Funimation, I honestly don't care that much. Uh, but I feel for all my foreigner weebs who do now need to pirate this. <laughs> um, but... Acquire it. Yo-ho, yo-ho. Oh, yeah, sorry. They need, to go, they need to go sailing if they want to see the show. You know. Uh, but if anyone needs new, not even new shows, old shows they haven't seen to keep you occupied during the quarantine, Funimation added all 94 original episodes of Roroni Kenshin. Jesus. Which wow. I, I haven't watched in its entirety, so I'm debating on whether that's like a watch project for me. It really depends on what's good next season. Sounds like it's that time of the year again to watch some Roroni Kenshin. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck because next season, like the two big shows I'm supposed to watch are Sword Art and Food Wars. And both of those I watch oh, with my fuck. buddy. But like, I can't reasonably watch with him during ah, you say that. the next couple weeks. But as me and Tyler and Aiden can attest, the Sicario group watch went very well so, last Friday. So I, I already pitched it to him. And he's like, it's not the same. I'd rather not. What a loser. All right, fine. Time to watch like, My Hero with us then on Saturday. But I'm like, we, wa- we watched like half of Attack on Titan like that while I was in college and it was A-OK. It's like, yeah, but we've evolved past that was his exact wording. Shit, I need to add anyway. a Mario to uh, what we watched because they had never seen it before. Oh, how, how did the group watch go? Uh, we realized it's important for everyone to get the copy of the thing themselves because Discord streaming is just not holding up. Yeah, it doesn't keep. Oh, up. you guys tried to watch a single person stream? We tried to watch through Tyler. Uh, me Ooh, and Aiden got it. No, the stream died and Leslie couldn't finish it. Um, Damn. But if we all get a copy, it seems like it's a great time. We had a blast watching it together. Yeah, finding anything that's on like a streaming service probably helps. Or, or <clears throat> if someone in their their group has Plex, uh, or. Yeah. <laughs> or if we go, we pre-plan and go sailing. So, <laughs> oh, is, is is that how you acquired your uh, fucking what's the word I'm looking for? Your gold to bloom of this movie? No, no I, I actually through Plex. Uh, I don't know what Aiden did. I rented it on YouTube because I have a little bit of Google credit. I uh, I also rented it on YouTube. Uh, not upset that I spent the money on it. Good movie. Yeah. We'll get to that later, though, Freeman. You can keep yeah. going about right, animation. Um, <laughs> also, as a result of coronavirus, Funimation is not doing any like in-house dubbing at the moment. So all the shows for this season had simul dubs. They've all been pushed back. I think about four weeks for recording. Uh, there's no news on what they're doing with simul dubs for next season. Uh, so all the entitled. Like... Oh, go ahead. Are they trying to like get people in the office one at a time, or just no? Um, they're not sure what they want to do. Some of the big name voice actors do have home studios. So like yeah. anyone who works out of California for Funimation, like they have Sabbath. a home studio. <laughs> Chris Sabbath has like three home studios. <laughs> um, but any of the ones who can provide audio still are, but until they can like, they can't just like release a show with three quarters of the sure, lines sure. voice. So some of the stuff is delayed. I guess the idea is, especially because they have pretty similar cast for a lot of their simul dubs, they may be like, we're going to have a day where it's only you and the sound engineer coming in. You are not going to interact. Everyone else is going to remote in, and you're going to record all your lines for these five shows. Right. So they might just try to do like a bulk recording. Yeah. Which is kind of like how they used to do their dubs before simul dubbing was a thing. So I'm pretty sure all of them will be used to doing that. Um, but we'll see. That was it for Funimation. Last Man, three things about new shows fuck this before news. we can get out of here. Dude, can um, I just say, as someone who sees titles related to this show you're about to talk about on like the subreddit, I have no clue what any of these names mean. <laughs> All right. So the series is known as Fate. Everything after the slash is the individual series. So if, if we okay. said like Marvel's Iron Man, Marvel is Fate and Iron Man is gotcha. Grand Order. So so the way, and I need to explain what Grand Order is for what I'm about to announce makes sense. 
So Fate Grand Order is a cell phone game where the plot line is the world is ending, but we found eight singularities during major points in history that you need to go back in time, resolve whatever the issue is, steal the source of that power, and only once all eight of them are resolved will the world stop ending. <laughs> So they, so they animated the first singularity into a movie called Fate Grand Order First Order, which is decent. It gives you a general understanding of what's what's the story, what a singularity is like, who the characters are. Um, but it doesn't make any sense if you haven't played all 27 previous Fate franchise games. Just to check real quick, this is also the films that are made by Ufotable also, right? No. Oh. Ufotable is adapting the third of three storylines oh that were in the original God. Fate Stay Night visual novel. So if you wanna if you wanna truly experience Fate Stay Night, the first arc that explains to you everything, you're fucked. The second arc on Limited Blade Works has a complete anime adaptation you can watch. Heaven's Feel is getting finished. We don't know when the fuck the third movie's happening because theaters are closed. Um, and then the prequel Fate Zero are all out there and you can watch that. And if you stop right there, you'd be good. But if you wanted to go a step beyond and just like give up any semblance of any other hobbies, you can get into Fate Grand Order. So there, there are eight singularities. And I realize I'm going on for a while here. The seventh singularity was very, very popular, so much that they animated an entire series based on it. Fate, Grand Order, Absolute Demonic Front, Babylonia, which I'm currently halfway through. It's a great show. It makes zero fucking sense, but every episode has like a 10 out of 10 high-quality animation fight scene. And I recommend watching it just if you want to watch cool fight scenes. But it makes zero fucking sense. It's almost done airing. And they announced they're going to adapt what's essentially the epilogue to all eight of these branches, which is Fate Grand Order, the Grand Temple of Time, Solomon. Which, for anyone who's watched the Marvel movies, this is like if they released like Iron Man 1, and then they released Age of Ultron, and they're like, okay, now we're also going to come out with Endgame. <laughs> like, that was the three they picked. Wow. <laughs> so for if you're anime only, none of this makes any sense, and I'm very concerned because like I like I like Babylonia makes no sense. I'm probably not gonna be able to watch this movie. Like I can try, I'm not gonna understand anything that's going on, <laughs> but you can or get any of the references. But it's probably gonna be animated. Well, I don't know. The Fate Grand Order project is so unusual. Like the only way to really experience it is just pay a fuck ton of money and play the mobile game. Anyway, I'm done giving everyone their intro into Fate Grand Order. <laughs> All right, last thing, super quick. I talked about Higurashi. This was this like horror anime from the early 2000s. Uh, they had teased an anniversary project. They are completely reanimating the first season, which is amazing because even for 2004 standards, the first season of Higurashi looks like booty. So having them reanimate with like a modern style is great. The entire original cast is back. Everyone looks super clean except the main character who has a mild case of hentai hair. But we'll see what happens. God. I'm very excited for this. I loved the original. The mystery was crazy, but it just it it almost feels too old, but not old enough to have like that Evangelion aesthetic. So I'll be talking about this a lot as we hear more about it. Uh, and then the last one, because I didn't realize it was tomorrow because Crunchyroll's bad at announcing their release dates, is Tower of God, their ad adaptation of the number one most popular manhwa, is releasing tomorrow. Oh, nice. Now yeah, so I'm very excited that. to try That's that. Cool. It's the new hype shit that Crunchyroll's pushing. Uh, we have the composer from Made in Abyss and Rise of the Shield Hero working on it, so the music's going to be dank. Very excited. It does look pretty cool. It's going to be hype. I have one friend who reads just a shit ton of manhwa, and he's, like, he's flipping out about this one. Even though he said the first arc is arguably the worst of the series, but whatever. Damn, wow, all right, way to kill my hype. <laughs> no, it's meant to get you hyped for season two. There you oh, go. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a, sure, look, if this, is a, this is a Crunchyroll exclusive. It's probably getting a season two. It's probably going to get bought by Funny right. Roll, Funimation for season two. <laughs> Funny Roll? Get the hell out of here. Look, <laughs> look I, this this one needs to succeed. Like This is going to prove that you can adapt Manwan to anime and open this whole new like whole avenue of stories to come in. Because like... We're getting tired of cute girls doing cute things. We're getting tired of just Are protagonist we? gets transported to another world and he's brokenly overpowered and he's got oh, a smartphone. I'm definitely tired like, of isekais. Yes, the, there's a reason that less and less are getting adapted is they realize that like people just don't give a shit anymore. They need interesting plot lines. And for like a new light novel to come up with an interesting plot line, it takes years for it to get to the point where they want to promote it and have material for an anime, whereas a lot of these manual have been going on for like forever. But it was never considered because it's not Japanese. Which means it ain't right. But now that China opened the door with their like 
shows that are indistinguishable from anime except for the fact that they're all in Chinese. Now that they've opened the door with that, Korea wants some of that. And I'm hoping I'm hoping this succeeds. Some of the plot lines for their shit's really cool. So yeah. Oh, we'll see. Hopefully it succeeds. It does look nice. So I I, I hope it I got that cool line style. Anyway, that's it for the weep shit. Let's get into the, the topic, which is things. what did we watch slash play in the last three weeks? Yeah, there's been a lot. So talk about it right now. Yeah, just do it first. All right. Doom. I'm gonna get some water while you get started. We beat Doom Eternal, everybody. Two, we'll accept. Two people here did. I didn't. Yeah, two people did. And that's me and Aiden. Yep. Fucking love this game a lot. I get to rip people in, up into with the chainsaw, blow them out of their Nikes with the shotgun. I do the zoob zob jump all over the place, a pew pew pew. It's fucking great. It's also Maybe. real long. It's super long. It's like not even that long though. It is though, compared I to have... <laughs> anything else. It's long. Uh, yeah. They did. They did really pull out all the whole. The whole like we're gonna actually have complex levels. <laughs> yeah, man. These fucking levels, even without doing some things, it's like takes like 45 minutes to an hour now i'm not i'm not complaining but like but i am i think and well <laughs> as, as far as like a okay like i get it. i'm doing this over and over and over again right like it's just like you know it feels like it got to the point where like towards the end where it's like okay i feel like they're just throwing shit at me now like there's nothing like really new or exciting once you get to the end of the game it's just a sudden ramp of enemies you know what i mean yep i know i was like i i feel i feel like that's what like you like hey, Which, you get that that well i see remember when i started playing it and i was like i don't know if i like this game yeah that's kind that was the vibe that i got pretty much right out of the gate I think it has some weird pacing issues. Still very much a 9.5 out of 10 for me, but there are just like very specific points in the game and just like the that they really frustrate you cuz you there's just not a whole lot you can do about certain things that that come up. Dude. There are some and you know exactly what I'm talking about, Tyler. Fucking there Marauders. Some, there are some fucking the uh, really I, cool I, enemy that everybody I was like, my first ah, one. yeah, Marauders. I fought my first one. That was the last mission I recorded yesterday. Yeah, yeah how do you feel about Marauders, Fuck Tim? Because I, I, I actually think that they, they, that is the most I'm broken the thing in this game. I honestly and it's really I think, frustrating. I think that should have been a one-time deal in my, like, I know I'm interjecting here. I think that that should have been a one-time thing, and honestly, I think it was a shitty fucking enemy. Um, I, I, I didn't really like him. I think, uh, in terms of the game, it's one of the worst things you can do for the game to have an, have an enemy who takes so much damage to kill. It just you don't move forward. You're just and he stuck. takes so long. It's that's a what wall. I'm saying. That's what I was saying. Like he takes uh, so much damage to put down and he can kill you so easy um that being said i didn't actually die to him on my first fight uh but Jesus, i died, I died quite a few times um, i died a few times i think he's also an example of uh why the multiplayer i think is a mistake again i know i haven't played it and i have no idea if it's good um but I had the idea while I was taking a walk earlier today to get some fresh air. Um, could you imagine a co-op mode for this game where you play as Marauders? Um, what? What do you mean, what? Wait, is that a thing? No, could you imagine if they had built that? No. Like, it's the perfect example of, here's the co-op mode with a slightly powered down version of the main character that has a slightly different move set and has less stuff. Oh, I get what you're saying. Look, I just don't want to get into this game. Like we almost did a, a like a uh, a short 
episode last week that was just talking about this. Yeah, but then I was like, yo, I want to play Doom, not to talk about it. I'm going to beat this game, and then I think if I ever want to play Doom again, I'm going to reinstall 2016. This game is not as good. And uh, To Tim. To Tim, no, it's not no, as good. I, I agree with Tim's sentiments. Um, okay, but how does it compare to Doom 1993, though? <laughs> uh, it's also not as good. Um, Damn. I wow. think. No, I don't know. I, I played that a bunch. See, but no, actually, the reason I thought of co-op was because I remembered playing co-op in that old Doom with my dad and my brother. And I was like, mm. man, it's so much fun to have be multiple superhero people. But if you use the Marauder, they're not as busted as the Slayer. But, like, imagine if you there was, like, the evil campaign, but it's co-op as you play as Marauders clearing the invasion. That would have been so cool. <laughs> Um, instead of this 2v1 mode that's like, I just don't... That Revenant level is only to make people interested in the multiplayer, isn't it? That was so cool. That was like the, uh... the most fun I've had. Okay. One of the, my biggest problems with this game, the most fun I had was when you take control of a Revenant and play a part of a level as a Revenant. That was the no, most like, fun I had. I'm surprised that they didn't like... Ever do it know. again ever do it again well, that's I, like, why i'm yeah, saying i think it's the multiplayer yeah, it's so much game left that like they could have done literally anything i think this game this game's biggest problem is it took the almost obviously there were issues with 2016 it's almost perfect in terms of what it wants to do it's a it's like it's like the concept that was so well put together and then they went, oh my god, this was so successful. How do we make everything bigger? And, like, more than half of the bigger stuff is worse. <laughs> like, yeah, the, I, uh, a lot know, of the systems are kind of screwy. Like, uh, They don't feel as good as they did in 2016. They took every system and made it way too complicated. Like, And then added more on top of yeah, it. <laughs> like, so does the, this end up feeling bloated? Yes. Oh my god. So Aiden said that this game is not too long. I would heavily argue that I mean, not only hours. is the it's game too long the levels individually are way too long like i i did an hour and 15 minute session yesterday i beat one level now to be fair actually for the third level in a row i got every single item in the level but i also really didn't take that much time maybe 10 minutes tops of stopping for a second and figuring out how to get to each item but, like, these are some long, long <laughs> levels compared to 2016. And I would argue that most of them are too long. Uh, yeah, definitely. I would have taken... And, and I, would have been, <laughs> I would have been sorry, more God. okay... No, I'm sorry. I would have been more okay with the game being 20 hours if the level if there were twice as many shorter levels. Yeah, and I... They're, like, deceptively long, too. Oh, my God, Because, like... Yeah. Uh, I think it was the third or fourth level, like the one the one that you get to, and it's like kind of gothicy architecture or whatever. That's the third like, one, because that's the one I had to yeah. replay four times because of a glitch and a, a missed item. Was it a glitch in the room with the electrified floor? No, I. Uh, it didn't give me the Empyrean key when I killed the Slayer Nest. Oh, I've got. I that happened to me twice in my playthrough. Nice. That's another thing. I I can. I forgot about that. That was super annoying too. I had to replay some. But then there's for also a well. glitch in that mission where sometimes you beat it and it doesn't give you credit, even though you got all ten weapon upgrade things. It doesn't yeah. show on the tracker. It shows nine out of ten, so you have to rebeat the mission to get that tenth one to show up on the main menu. And I wanted to do that, so I replayed it. Um, Amazing. <laughs> but that's also the reason I had the super shotgun maxed out before I even left the third level and went on to the That's train. right. You did say you did that. <laughs> um, I think this game also has one of the worst, and I do say worst beginnings to any action game or shooter. Uh, this game starts way... As someone who beat 2016 on Ultra on uh, Ultraviolence... Playing this on ultra violence, I almost wanted to restart and go back to normal. You have no ammo, you have no guns, and you're expect like I keep thinking about it in my mind. The first level of 2016, you get the pistol and you get the shotgun. And before you even fight a monster that really fights back, you have the shotgun. 
In this game, you have the shotgun, and you're expected to kill an arachnatron with it immediately, with about 10 shells, because you yeah, don't man, carry more good. ammo. It's too much too fast. Even as I know what I'm doing, you are just too fragile at the beginning of this game. Like, I get that it's supposed to be like, oh, you build to the power fantasy, because now that I'm like six levels in, my character feels like a badass, and I, I'm actually, like I said, I beat the Marauder without dying. Like, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I think it's lame, but I feel like it's also just another one of those things where it's like, you just eat shit at the beginning of a lot of like But in 2016, games. like... You fight imps, zombies, and soldiers with the shotgun, and then you get the assault rifle, and that's in the first mission. In this game, you have to you're expected to beat what's basically a mini boss in the Arachnatron multiple times with basically nothing. Yeah. And you die and you die and you die. Yeah, and I feels, died a hundred times. And it feels like shit. <laughs> Cause I don't know, like yeah, I got upset, but I got I end up getting over it. And I did too. But I feel like... I didn't feel bad. I felt bad. I was like, this... The pacing at the beginning is so... Like, it was so smooth in 2016 to just start that game and just go. They introduced... Uh, they took because I realize of everything were, you guys are talking about, I am the opposite. Yes. I tried playing 2016, like, the other day. So, like, like let, let's go back to it. I'm like, oh, like eh. As like a comparison, I'm like, oh, this game is cool, but like, I don't know. I feel like I would just rather play Eternal. I'm so the other way. <laughs> I know you like, guys don't want to let me say anything about. No, it. you can talk. No, that's fine. It's fine. We're not here to criticize. For, uh, actually, sorry, we're here to criticize. No, not like, I, and I, I don't, Tyler. It's not like I don't like the game. Yes. I had a great time with the game. <laughs> I think for like, all of my issues. I'm just, so okay, yeah. the my my whole thing for being so critical about this is like Doom 2016 was already such a good game yes. that the very minor things that they've done it has really just it it feels very uh I don't know, I need to be nitpicky. Because it's like you did it so good already, like, and then you change things to m make them worse. A lot of the flow is a little weird. Like, having the flamethrower for specifically armor oh my God. is like just a whole new mechanic that you got to deal with. Like, I, like I said, this is this game is too bloated. You, you could cut out half of everything and you'd have a package as good as Doom 2016. I think what they tried to do, I'm not like wholly defending them i think it's uh at least i noticed this from watching youtube play because all three of us have drastically different play styles and i believe that they wanted to put this stuff out there because like it, it just increases the toolbox i guess to say because we all use the weapons like way differently like i so i go in and i make sure i tap like for example like i go in i make sure i hit like all of the uh like the heavies like stuff off like the mancubus is like you know guns i make sure i shoot those off and then like i might pick off like one of the guys and then like i'll start going in aiden he's like yo i'm just gonna just shotgun around i'm just gonna use the chain i'm just gonna fucking kill everything like he just jumps in there that is what I am like too. And, yeah, like you like you guys do something completely different. Like I go based off of like like I have a priority <laughs> I, and like I, I think, follow it. I think I told you guys after I unlocked the super shotgun, the game didn't even feel like it started until I got the super shotgun. <laughs> yeah. Like that 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 was that was a quote. <laughs> it, it, yes. I, I think they should have almost started you with it because it, it's teaching you to the, they want you to be mobile and running around and killing stuff which is why the chainsaw is almost impossible to use against anything above an ad, but it refills on its own now. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's, there's, God, there's just too many systems everywhere. They, they wanted to make the pace of the game faster. I think, they and, and I think, hard. I think they, they wanted to double down on 2016 and that's not necessarily a bad idea, but I think, the contrast of all of the games that had come out for forever were like 
Call of Duty and fucking sh- like j- Battlefield. And it, it was all so slow, boots on the ground, military fucking FPSs. And they're like, oh, people like faster games and they like the adrenaline rush of being able to jump around and do all this crazy shit. And they're like, all right, let's take that up to 11 when it's like, you don't need to do that. No, I, I, I like I that. I think I, I, I also I enjoy it. it, but like as a, I, I think there are just inherent design flaws in making the game as fast as it is. And you end up with shit like the Marauder because if if that shield was breakable, a marauder would almost not be a threat. But instead, it's like you can move so fast and you have so many things at your disposal. They literally have an enemy that just decides to be immune to damage for just yeah. periods of time. Because Unless otherwise, it, it would not be, a be at the right moment at the right <laughs> time, <laughs> which is exceptionally difficult to do. What do you mean? I did it out, you know. You got that was the luckiest <laughs> fucking shit in the world, and you know it. Don't even. Oh, it was yeah. But uh, that, like, I think they 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 dialed it up too much. I don't think they focused on the right things. But still, a very good game, and you should play it if you like. Yeah, Doom for 2016. For all of my problems with it, I'd still say the game is like an eight and a half, nine. But I think 2016 is just like a straight 10. If you like to go 10. fast and you like having murder boners, this is the game. See, you say that, Tyler, but you are just you just said you're the one who sits back and snipes off weak points, whereas me and Aiden And then I like, don't. Then I jump in, and then I'm killing shit. Uh, can I, <laughs> yeah, there's another, actually, there's another example. Weak points. I think weak points was not a mechanic that this game should have had. It means you're not focused on killing things. You're focused on trying to, th- like... It's like... If I can't kill this man- mancubus now, I have to shoot off its stuff and run away. I feel like they used the weak point system as an excuse to make those monsters way more powerful than they would have been. Like, the Arachnatron is so... Every arena in this game is, like, wide open these days. And every enemy is going to kill you if you're not always moving or yeah. shooting off the weak points. You have to pick one. And me and Aiden would go with running, and you go with the weak points. But it's like... Nah, I, but even then, I still have to run. Because, especially towards the end of the game, it's like, if you shoot them, right? If you shoot the weak points, cool. Like, that gives you an initial start. But then more things start, yeah. like... because they And it's like, you don't have time to think a lot of the time. So you have to switch to weapons that, like, you can easily disarm them with. Because, like, my favorite for the longest time was the uh, assault rifle, right, with the sniper attachment, and it worked. And as Aiden could tell later on when he watched me play, it didn't really work out. But, like, that's what I kind of tripped me up on, right, because I was so used to using that gun. But when you use the sniper feature, you can't really stop in mid room or else you're gonna yeah, die. I, I didn't look at the upgrades because I ignored that immediately, but I feel like with that like a sniper doesn't work in this game for long long term. Yeah, long term it doesn't. Like mid game, sure, but like late game with all these enemies, you you can't stand still. You just die. <laughs> yeah, you can't stand still, you can't but like you know, I, I, I still I still prioritize I still tried to find ways to prioritize the um oh god. Sorry, I still try to prioritize those because, like, because that's how I know my like, oh, this thing's gonna fuck me up if I don't, you know, from a long range, right? If it's not like a Hell Knight or whatever, right? So it's like if I just get that, I can deal with that, then I could deal with the Hell Knight, and then I'll go back to the range again. I think it was like, I kind of liked it. It's annoying, I know, for some people, but I think to me, not only did I have to move and fight at the same time i also had to think as well and i think i like that like in the midst of like the blood pressure going i'm like oh i have to think about things i have to be aware of my situation and surroundings i think my last comment is going to be i think the most fun that this game has at all is the slayer gates where you're just locked in a room with like a million dudes and i know that sounds counter to my talk about how weak you feel because when you get trapped in a corner you just die but the slayer gates are like the most tightly designed arenas in the entire game 
and there are a million enemies, but that's where like the style of just take out the shotgun and zip from enemy to enemy and hide behind cover is like the most fun thing ever. Oh, then you're gonna love the end of the game, Tim. But you those are all big open play rooms. the master levels. You should play the master levels. I think I unlocked one. I'll probably give it a shot. I don't know if I'll record it or not because it'll probably be terrible. But <laughs> um, uh, yeah. My my last comment on Doom is uh, it's a good game and you should still buy it. And I really like the story. <laughs> See, that's where I, I might just, disagree. I I just like the way that it plays out, and it's I enjoyed it. It it it, it, it was like that. That that fucking the little boy in me really appreciated it. I mean, that's a that's an example of where I need to get to the end of the game to really judge it. But early on, it just feels like a lot of its a lot of the time dragging is for story purposes. Like I feel like if the story wasn't such a big part of the game now, they would have made shorter levels. But for story yeah. purposes, they have to kind of bulk them out. It um, is weird having cutscenes in a Doom game. I do. I was gonna say I do also miss the simplicity of 2016, where there's a story, but it's like, yo, go close the portal to hell. That's it. And like along the way, smash the machines because not because your character is like only angry, but more that he just doesn't care and wants to get through this shit. That's kind of. Yeah. I feel like they slightly honed the Doom Marine more from. I'm angry, but also I'm just frustrated and want to be done with this to like literally a slathering rabid dog is like what he is now. Like I saw a cutscene that Tyler, when Tyler was playing earlier, that's just like him just going, rip and tear. Oh yeah. His origin story. Well, his post origin, not origin story or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Post doom 1993. Yeah. Yeah, spoiler. This, this, yeah. All right, did you get there yet, Tim? Nope. Uh, Never mind. I'm I not just, gonna... I just got Hayden. Oh, okay. Because, like I but said, you the know, Marauder. you know what the deal is, though, right? With, with this Doom guy. Yeah, the bunny. That he's the original Doom guy. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why he has the armor. Okay. Dude. Ugh. And the and the and the uh, the painting with the bunny. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Poor bunny. Can I just say, this is the most minor gripe ever. I wish when you had Sentinel... Like, you know the Sentinel battery stuff? Yep. Mm -hmm. I wish to God you could just put both in at the same time. You didn't have to do that. I... That's one of those minor quality of life things that always gets to me really easily. Does this need an animation? Like, and every <laughs> single time, and you have to walk up to each one and confirm it. It's like, I have two in my inventory. Just shove them both in and open the damn door. That's such a minor gripe, but I remembered it from recording yesterday. <laughs> nah, that's fair. I it kind of irritated me too, because I went back at the like bo on the last level you and just mass open everything. Stuff, yeah. Yep, and so I was lift, like, thunk, push, turn. <laughs> <sighs> it honestly took me like actually like ten minutes. <laughs> it felt like forever. But I digress. But there's also a game that came out much more peaceful game. <laughs> Man, no one gives a fuck about Animal Crossing. No one gives a fuck about Animal Crossing. No one gives a goddamn. It's being played behind me on my Switch right now. This is the only semblance of an escape we have from our, our caged existences. <laughs> yes. It offers what every gamer dreams of, a sense of normalcy. <laughs> <laughs> the idea uh, that you could realistically fly to some place where it's almost like a vacation. And live there. And living, oh my god. <laughs> Talk of shit we don't have in 2020. <laughs> this so, is why I hate video games. They apply to the male they, they, uh, fantasy. Appeal to the mil they appeal yeah. to the millennial fantasy. Ah, oh, I just paid off my house loan. You know, nothing in this game is more satisfying when your character celebrates says, I just paid off my whole loan. And you just, you feel it in your soul. Um... Uh. This game, One day. I've never, having never played it. Oh, I seen... literally just came across that meme. <laughs> literally just came across a meme on Reddit. Nice. Um, having never played or seen any of these before, uh, this game does seem very relaxing and fun, but man, is it the epitome of a lot of Japanese design philosophy and like how things should take a long time in certain places. It's interesting. So previous games did have this sort of data dayness, but it was never as much as this. 
like this game is very heavily cemented in the you're gonna play a little bit every day design pattern mm -hmm. but gamers don't do that so like we've had like the big issue i have right now is i see tons and tons of pictures of all the crazy shit people have done and i'm wondering like how did they get the stuff They're like oh well like it's not available in the store until after your third month in the game <laughs> and i'm like like that's that's cool that's cool that they're like oh we really want to like really reward you for sticking with this game long term but the fact that everyone's just jumping ahead day by day so there's someone who's already like two years in advance he's like yeah everything caps out at a year right now oh my and God. it's just like we didn't need to know this like yeah this it's a little too much you don't need to dissect this game guys Come yeah <laughs> people are going above and beyond like it's getting weird like what i saw an article i think i don't know if polygon had shared it today but it was that newcomers to the franchise are being turned off from the fact that they'll start the game it's very slow and they go on twitter and they see people posting like their like masterpieces and they just feel very like look at my over, finished over museum. it's it's the same idea of like seeing other people on social media and all the great shit they do and you're like oh i'm no, nowhere near as close to that it's like yeah but this dude's played literally 10 days straight and has fucked up his switches like current calendar in order to do this mm -hmm. so i don't know it's it's creating a weird environment and i'm not like i I like where they were going with it because they do want to reward someone who plays this game a lot, but at the same time, it's so easy to cheese your way around the rewards that it makes it look stupid in comparison. Yeah, I mean, Animal Crossing is one of those games, though, where it's like, don't worry about how the, how other people are playing the game. Yeah, yeah. Just visit like, your is you play it for, because you want to? Like, yeah. Well, I mean, adding on multiplayer is kind of hurting. People are going to their hardcore friends' islands and seeing it very well decorated. Yeah, uh also oh my god, I don't want to talk anymore about online too much, but the fact that it takes like 2 minutes for one person to connect oh, dude, to another it, island like is saying, insane. Japanese design philosophy of how horrible it's it is so to bad. do things like this. If you get more than like 5 people on an island, it just like it just doesn't know what to do anymore. <laughs> like fish <laughs> stop spawning and like oh my god. fucking you don't have any bugs and Amazing. like Nobody will talk to you. It's weird stuff. <laughs> um, do we have any other games we want to talk about? I've been playing a bunch of Civ Four. That game's playing still great. Twenty Duty. years later, Mountain Blade War Ban or Mountain Blade Two <laughs> Banner <laughs> out today. To weird yesterday. ass game, dude. <laughs> Yo, it's a good game. <laughs> Seems exactly like Mountain Blade original. Uh yeah, it, I can tell. I haven't I haven't made it very far in the game yet, but there are just a it lot of systems today. going on. <laughs> yeah, like whatever. you're not gonna you you work today. You're not gonna make it that far in the game. Well, yeah, no I, I, well, I played play it. Tonight. I played it last night. I oh my I was up last night and I played a little bit of it, but you know, still it was like it's a cool game, man. If you like the first one, you'll like this one. That's for sure. Uh, it just looks better, runs better. It can render a thousand characters on screen, allegedly, but we'll see how my PC handles that when I get there. Um, Tyler Freeman, any other games? Still rocking Monster Hunter World Iceborne because oh, yeah. I can't beat this game. Yeah, I, just you and keep, <laughs> I just keep <laughs> grinding away at shit that doesn't exist. I'm One sure. does not simply beat Monster Hunter. I'm sure after uh, this, we'll all start watching you. Me and Todd will start watching you and Aiden play again. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I played. I don't think I'm gonna keep playing it, but I started Condemned Criminal Origins again wow. the other day. <laughs> oh, you also played another game. Uh, what? Gun... Rainbow Six. I played Rainbow Six for like a afternoon. Gungeon. What about Gun? Oh, oh, Exit the Gungeon. Right? Is that what you're talking about? Top seller on Switch that I saw the other day. Oh, I didn't like it. Nope looked lame from no. what we saw of it from watching you stream it yeah oh yeah so like so i bought so for the listeners i bought exit the gungeon uh little did i know i was super hyped though when i but uh yeah let me bring it back because I'm, I'm having a stroke aiden told me oh exit the gungeon um a sequel to enter the gungeon your favorite game and i'm like what Turns out it had been out for a while on like iOS or something like that. Like it was an iOS the game. You mean the arcade? Uh, the oh, the, the Apple arcade. arcade. Yeah, it was yeah. Apple Arcade. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. And they, you know, brought it over to Steam, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. 
and I played it for about 45 minutes and I knew that this is not what I wanted. Uh, but the premise is instead of descending into the gungeon, you are ascending. You are trying to escape the gungeon after, you know, beating the final boss. Um, and you ride up this like whole elevator and you fight basically the same monsters that are same enemies that you do fighting down the gungeon. Um, and you get random, uh, random guns. And I don't like that. What the, like, so, you know, when you get, what, what was it? I think it was like, uh, every so often, like depending on my kill chain, I could get like a better weapon. Yeah. Yeah. And I hated that. That was, that was a shitty combat system. So I don't know it, if you're looking for something new, if you like enter the gungeon and you want something that's like enter the gungeon, find something else like you know uh what's that game that mike likes a lot why am i blanking on it in uh risk of rain oh there's risk of rain no the uh binding of isaac right oh, you want yeah you want you want some like binding of isaac or something like that get that this is something completely different um i don't it's it's fun I wouldn't recommend it that much. I, I ended up returning it and got my money back for it. Um, like, pretty much immediately. I was surprised the, about the turnaround for it. Um, and then Condemned was on sale. So I was like, fuck it. I'm gonna buy it. Uh, that's all That's all for me playing, though. I, I really haven't, like, been playing too much. I really don't think I have anything else, so uh, let's talk about things well, that actually, were watched. Before we get to all the anime, <laughs> Aiden, I know you mentioned it was good, but what did you actually think of Sicario, having seen it for the first time? Um, Very enjoyable. Very enjoyable movie. Uh, I, I mean, it's like, it was really cool. There was a lot of cool shit that happened. That, and it fucking... This is just pretty much a whole movie of just cool shit happening. And it was That's very much like... God. Yeah, Jesus. Um, yeah, no, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it was definitely up my alley as far as things that I like. Uh, the cinematography in it was fucking really cool. Oh. My, my favorite scene is also Tyler's favorite scene. <laughs> Which one? The... <laughs> Where they're all like, uh, just before they like go into the tunnels. Yeah, the sunset after shot. After they gear up the sunset shit. Yeah. That's such a cool shot. That was like, oh, superb. And I mean, really, the whole thing was like that, though. Like, I still love the border crossing. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was about to say that, too. Uh, that scene was really awesome and was like, I don't know. Put the gun down. Put the uh, gun down. If if shit like this actually goes on in real life, uh, damn man. <laughs> Yo, it, it just might. It just might, and I'm like, fuck. Some of this is some terrible shit. No, you're just along for the ride. CIA can't operate. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what the fuck, Josh Brolin? <laughs> uh, but yeah, highly recommended. Um, thank you for, uh, inviting me to that, because, uh, I probably wouldn't have watched it otherwise, honestly. Yeah. So, yeah. If Great. We're, if we're not all watching, like, new shows, we should, we should pick things that someone hasn't seen to rewatch together. So that someone can watch a new thing. I'm down with that. Speaking of a new thing, Tyler finished a new show on Netflix that the last episode I raved about... <laughs> Oh, what, uh, Castlevania? Castlevania. Yeah. Fucking like that. That show is great. That last episode is Yo, so even if, sick. Even if you don't like the games, or even heard of the game, doesn't matter. Just Show's watch great. this. It's so good. This is the best not anime you could probably watch right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Tower of God comes out tomorrow. Not That's... anime. Not, but it's on Crunchyroll. We're about anime. to start nitpicking. We're about to start. We're about oh to start. <laughs> We're about to start World War Three. Do you think that this will? This is anime. 
is uh oh no if we really want to get them going is avatar the last bet <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> no we're not having this argument uh, <laughs> it's just a cartoon yeah who thinks we'll be it up is? all night who says but it was it made is? by the same korean animation studio that does anime too bad <laughs> damn too bad <laughs> wow. you know that shit was on nickelodeon it's yep. a cartoon cartoon Jesus. so what dbz was on the Cartoon oh, Network. Cartoon yeah, Network. It, was yeah. the, it was in the anime block. It's anime. Ooh, are we about to start this? Ooh. Are we about to start topic number two? <laughs> oh, God. From out of nowhere. Um, uh, no, but no, that's that's an interesting thing. Uh, listeners, what do you think about that? Um, is Castlevania an anime and is Avatar an anime? Two different questions. Is And is Tower of God well, technically a- an anime? <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I, I personally don't give a shit, but I'm I'm willing to throw the meat in the center to watch the bulls fight over it. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, this isn't a new fight. <laughs> this is not a new fight. Lee's been right. warring about this since as early as you know, whenever Avatar came out. <laughs> Tyler, maybe we shouldn't say Castlevania isn't an anime because then you see that uh, that one animation from the last episode with all the line work, and it looks pretty anime. <laughs> You say it's that's pretty, right. it's, it's better pretty than anime. anime. It's oh, like rivaling man. some like my hero levels of like just look at all the lines on screen right now that you can clearly see. <laughs> it's so um, good. I speaking of my hero, I guess. I believe all three guys here are caught up, except for Absolutely Aiden. not. I did not see um, the new episode on Saturday. I'm in a perpetual state you, of being six days behind. You watched the the band though, right? Yes, I saw the performance. Nice. Phenomenal. Yeah. Great episode. I've actually liked uh, the song. I've been re-listening to it a couple times. It's really fun. So the entire soundtrack for the season just dropped on Spotify like a week ago. Ooh. So everything's in there, including that one song from uh, the um, Overhaul fight slash the movie. Ooh. So very good listen. Tyler, I know you're providing oh, yeah, input. I caught up. No, I caught I... up. I... What, what? You're still not loving it? No. Oh, <laughs> no. Where we are now is fine. Like, like... Now they're starting to, like, get into, you know... Oh, you watched... Wait, sorry. I just realized you watched a couple days ago, right? Yeah, yeah, I caught up. Uh, Freeman, it seems like we're heading for one more fight before the season's over. (laughs) Or before this block is over. I mean, that's good. We don't want a case of last season where they just kind of, like, started the intro of an arc and then just left you for six months. So aren't we going to have one... Is there only one more episode? Do you know how many more there are? I believe so. Because it would make sense if there's only one more episode this season where this episode ended off. Let's find out if my anime is full load. Also, spoilers, we met Hawks, and he seems busted. Wow, is his power He good. seems way too broken, like, man. Dude. Freeman, do you know Oh, God about damn it. Him? What? All right, they already started their fucking April Fool's joke. Every, they replaced every single score on my anime list with emojis. Damn. I'm like, I'm like, why the fuck is there a 100 on this shit? I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be a 10 out of 10. Um, so, Hero Academia, yeah, there should be one more episode next week. Okay. It seems like we're going to have a not earth shattering fight, but a fight definitely this coming episode. But yeah, Hawks. <laughs> Tyler, when, when he's walking down the street and you just see. That was dumb. You see the feathers doing their shit. It's like, yeah, I, wow, I is he like too it. good? I, I didn't like that. Like Freeman, you thought wing, you thought feathers were just for flying. You were wrong. Ah, uh, they're for style points. Uh, well, yes, he does show style points in this episode as well. Cool. But... Let's leave it at that because anything more would be spoiling the episode no, for someone who hasn't watched yet. No, no, no. I I'm not saying anything else, but it's fun. But he's busted. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, um, I don't think this counts as a spoiler, but. Also, Endeavor's armor from the movie is in this episode. Way to spoil it. That's not a spoiler. It was already in the movie. But I didn't know it was going to actually make an appearance. Who season. cares? Yeah, it doesn't change fuck, anything. Man. It's more. It's also for Tyler the, because the, he didn't the see the movie. The surprise reveal of these details is critical to the enjoyment of an episode. And okay. that's taken from Tyler, me. you get now know that this is the cool armor I was talking about in the movie for oh, Endeavor. You know. Um. All right. Next anime, I have like three more that I watched. Good lord. Oh. And I'm behind on all the shows that you watched. <laughs> Technically, if I count Val, there's also Chihaya Furu on here that you did finish, so. Yes. Chihaya Furu was very good. Um, um, 
I'll, t- I'll talk for like 30 seconds on it. Animation was stellar. Storyline was great. The only problem is they leave us on a massive cliffhanger with no telling if there's going to be a season four. Yeah, that's what... Um, it definitely did the show justice after taking like seven years off from season two. Um, That's all I have to say about that. Chai Food is good. Go watch it. Also, uh, Haikyuu is still very good. Season's currently airing. And uh, man, Nationals is pretty sweaty. <laughs> I mean... They're gonna have to end it at some point because they're going on a three week or a twelve week break. Sure, but it's man. We we I'll, we saw the first match. That's all I'm gonna say, and it's great. It's really cool to see the team like doing new things and adjusting to a new space on the fly. Also, new rivalries are great. <laughs> yeah, they they did a good job of. I, I mean, I think it was pretty obvious during the like the all the teams being in the same room right before the tournament starts that oh, every yeah. team every team has a main character on their team. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um there's also I I look I can't wait for you to catch up Freeman because this last episode had a really awesome character like meeting each other moment. And it's it's a lot of fun. Speaking of Yeah, I got to talk to my buddy about this. If this if I have to end up staying quarantined more than just 14 days, I'm going to tell him we're just going to have to watch it separately. Yeah. Um also, Val and I watched the entirety of Ascendance of a Bookworm on Freeman's <laughs> recommendation, and he hasn't finished the show yet, so we pulled ahead and well, beat him. Well, hold up. So usually I watch one episode a night, so I pace myself, but like the second half of last week, I didn't watch any of it. So I've watched one a night for the last two nights. I'm set to finish it before this weekend when season two premieres. So I'll be caught up for season two. Well, we're already caught up, and the show is great. It's it's not quite laid back camp in terms of how easy it is, but it's pretty close. It's the closest I've seen to just. Look, I knew nice the second I heard Mother's show. Basement begin to jerk off about it in every <laughs> single video he made, I knew it was going to be <laughs> worth watching. Um, yeah, that's everything I watched. So, anybody else? I know there's at least one other thing on here that I didn't put uh, here. I uh, what, as far as shows or just things well, you watch in general? Very bottom, but yes. Yeah, I got two. Oh, but you can go. oh Shit, yeah. Wait. Initial D fourth stage. I finished it, Freeman. Oh hell yes. Yo, this is honestly out of everything I've seen so far. This has the, been the best season. Yeah, dude. Fourth season is the best. The rest, maybe take a short break, then go watch fifth stage and final stage because they're not as good. But fourth stage is definitely peak initial D. Dude, like it's it's pretty great. Fucking god arm and god foot. The god foot. <laughs> See, like, no one pisses me off about this show though. I'm like, man, this is fucking awesome. And then even at the very end, Tax dad ta- Takumi's dad is like, he still got a lot to learn. I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? <laughs> he literally like he's literally him- like beat every racer he's faced in Japan. His dad's like, damn, this kid still doesn't know how to drive a car. I'm like, what the fuck? Like that. That's what kind of bothers me. Like other people are also like that too. They're like, oh, him and uh, uh, oh my god, um, FD, Kisuke. Yeah, yeah. Him and Kisuke have been destroying it, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh, these boys still got a lot to learn. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? What? <laughs> like look, then, when, how when, bad when was the, everybody when, else then? Look, when the Godfoot, who's literally just like beating. Takumi's ass until he pulls over because he has to vomit. Like, yes, that's a legitimate. Like, yeah, I'm a better race than him. He's just younger than me, kind of thing. But the other one, Godhand had literally no excuse for losing. He's just bad. He was he was literally just bad. He's like, oh well, my car gave out <laughs> flat. <laughs> like, it, I was like, okay, fine. But yeah, no, it was like, I don't know. It doesn't make it like that. Doesn't make any sense to me. It's like, okay, like, how far does it get then? And how and how bad does the Akina speed stars have to suck? <laughs> like if everybody else is this good, right? Like co- like come on, I don't believe like everybody is this good. I don't know. Like I like it's stuff like that that's just kind of like eh, I guess. Yeah. But uh overall, I thought like at like as a theme of what it was, I thought it was really good. Like this, uh, this is kind of how I felt with um, the arc that you guys thought I hated, but I really didn't. Was the the raid arc for my hero? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
like this is the this is like the same kind of concept. Like some parts of it were just like, what the fuck? But overall I thought it was amazing because of, you know, just like the idea of it was just like really cool and like for the most part pretty well executed. It's good to hear. I'm always happy to hear about people like watching initial D just because it's a hard show to get into. Like I've people I, I know will love it and like I can't get them to sit down for six episodes just to watch the first race. Yeah, it that is hard. The and the only reason why I think I'm I getting into the show, it was easier for me because I already knew what like what happened because I read in the manga up until um uh when he leaves Mount Akina. Oh, uh, when he faces off and, against the the racing the two female racers. Yeah, that's like up. Uh, that's when I uh that's what I read up to. Um, so like I I had already knew what I was getting myself into. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty good. If if you if you like Fast and the Furious, uh, Initial D's better. So <laughs> you know, just have to cope with the shitty graphics in seasons one and two. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I also wanted to say because uh, I watched a another movie. I've been trying to watch more movies lately. Get back into that. Uh, I watched There Will Be Blood. It's like a 10-year-old movie at this point. <laughs> have you guys heard of it? Maybe Tim. Like Tim, you might have heard, heard of it. Oh, God, no, I, I, haven't. Look. Uh, I, I recognize the name. It's got What's-His-Face from Gangs of New York in it. No, I didn't see this. I heard of it, but I didn't see it. Yeah, it's a, it's a Western about this... Uh, oil prospector turned oil baron uh in the late 1800s to early 1900s it's got an 8.2 uh, on imdb yeah it won like netflix. three oscars yeah that's why i saw it i was scrolling through netflix i was like uh, i want to watch something but i'm not in the mood to watch any of the other stuff i want to watch and i saw that i was like oh you know why not let's give this a try and so mm. i watched it and nice. thought it was pretty good um, so if you guys want another quarantine movie, you know, yeah. that's, that's a pretty good one. Uh, I forgot one more thing, speaking of stuff on Netflix, that I did watch all of, and I know I'll forget to talk about it if I don't say it now. I watched all of Iron-Blooded Orphans. I finished oh, it. yeah. Congratulations. <sighs> God, that is a heavy hit. Wild ride, wasn't it? It's one Raise hell of a ride. Our flag! I, yeah, dude, <laughs> I've re-listened to that song. That show is sick. Um, man. That show is one of the best self-contained stories I've seen in a while. Everything else yes. is kind of open-ended bullshit. This is just start and end. <laughs> Beginning, middle, something in the in between there, and then an ending. And it's um, got that ending, which most animes don't. Yeah. As we, Considering Wing is one of my favorite series ever, mostly just because of Legacy, it's such a different feel for a Gundam show. And I know it's divisive to have... I mean, we've talked about it last time, like how divisive the designs and everything are, but I think this was sick. This is a really different feel, and it feels like these are metal machines slamming into each other, and it's really cool. Look, if if Strange Hairstyles didn't sell shows, then Yu-Gi-Oh! wouldn't be a franchise anymore. <laughs> True. Um, no, this this is a lot of fun. This is really awesome. And it's it is not a happy show, so don't go into it thinking it is, but... Yo, man... It's still always, super well done. And this is Tyler's always, jam in a second. <laughs> oh, it is. It's yo, I tell everybody, I'm like, yo, Iron Blooded Orphans is the be is one of the best mob animes I've ever seen. <laughs> it it literally follows the plot of a like of a mob movie, if you think it's about it. It's kinda got a similar arc to the Godfather, doesn't it? Yeah, it it, it really sort of. does. You have, you know, the starting out point, like where people are just starting out, like learning how the world works, they they realize they have a skill in this, then they get, then they ramp, and then they become the best that they are, and they're like, no, let's take it a bit further, and then Icarus happens. And that's when someone way bigger is like, nah. <laughs> and then it's just a sharp decline into like everything turns into mass chaos, and things do not turn out well yeah. in any sort of way. Not at all. But it's it's um, awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love I, watching the entire arc where shit didn't turn out well while I was on a train. That was a very oh. emotional train ride. 
I, yeah, I also, Orga's hair is still the best ever. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the most physically impossible. <laughs> we don't want this guy to have a hat, but we need him to have, like, a brim to cover yeah, his we eyes. Yeah, need, we need something to shade his eyes 24-7 <laughs> that isn't glasses or a hat. Let's make his hair be a hat brim. Jeez. Uh, Tyler, anything else to watch? Uh, We're almost no. at two hours, so we're probably heading out. But, uh, Aiden, you got yeah, anything? I got uh, I honestly haven't had a whole lot of time to watch anything. Uh, aside from Sicario, I didn't really... And playing games. Yeah, I, I played some games, but, I mean, like, shit. I want to start watching The Kingdom. That's the only thing that I got, like, on my list right now. <laughs> oh, okay. But other than that, I haven't been able to watch anime. It's, it, may, it, I, it makes me feel weird. I gotta like scratch that itch, itch at some point. Watch like some Psyche K or something, but yeah, uh, our, I just I, I just have not. Days. <laughs> you haven't to, been like, able to watch any JoJo. You haven't yeah, had to man. watch any RE Zero or anything like that. Oh, God, it sucks. But I'll, I'll have to start. Uh, I'll have to find some more time if I can. But yeah, that's it. Freeman, anything else before we stop? Um, clearing out all the anime from last season, I'm not going to list it. In terms of non-anime shows, um, I'm catching up on uh, FX's Dave. Very funny show. If you know who Lil Dicky is, he has his own show now. Uh, it's more than just rap, I'll put it that way. Um, and then I also started, I finally started Rick and Morty season four, so I'm oh. going to catch up on that before new episodes eventually come back. Oh, if they ever do, ever. If they do, that. yeah. Um, I heard a lot of negative things going into season four, and honestly, I think the season's pretty funny, so... It's meeting my expectations. I, I will say that I was one of those semi-negative people. <laughs> there are a lot of Nazis in the first few episodes. Oh, I mean, as a Jew, I found it hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've reached the end just under two hours. Um, I think with quarantine and everything, we'll try to be hitting these every week. Maybe we'll even start doing more frequent like mini ones. We have nowhere we else have, to run to. Uh, so, exactly. I mean, we have no excuse. Not like we're going anywhere. Yeah, so like we might try to do some more or something. I don't know, but we'll find out. But hopefully we'll at least get the next few episodes out on time after missing so many weeks. But until next time, thanks for listening, everybody. You guys want to? Oh. Oh, we're out. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. No, you... Goodbye. Oh, this my is God. just oh, is this been Friedman? Yeah, also, is Andrew Mosley known as Friedman? Jesus, sorry. AIDS. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We'll catch y'all next week. Thanks for listening. Oh my god. <laughs>